Welcome to the March edition of The Good Sport at thegoodsportonline.com. I'm your host, Brendan Unkrich. We're here at Hinkle Fieldhouse, where the movie Hoosiers was filmed, one of the greatest sports movies of all time, and also the home of the Butler Bulldogs. I'm here with Coach Brad Stevens as our monthly guest. Coach Stevens, welcome, and thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule to meet with us. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. As you look around this gym during practice and the game, do you ever get that Hoosier movie feeling? Well, I think you get it all the time, and uh, you get if you don't, you get reminded of it because people will walk through the, the doors and look around. And, you know, the Big Ten tournament's here this weekend, and I've already seen fans with different uh, schools, the shirts of different schools, walking through the hallways and, and coming in here and looking and getting wide-eyed. And, you know, every, everybody wants to come, A, because they've seen the movie, and then I think, B, last year's run probably – added to the intrigue of the making Hinkle a regular stop on the visit. How does it feel to be back to fifth consecutive year in the NCAA tournament after it's winning your conference title? Yeah, it's almost overwhelming um, to be to five straight NCAA tournaments. You know, my first year at Butler, I was the director of basketball operations, and we went to the tournament, um, beat Wake Forest in the first round, and lost to a absolutely loaded Arizona team. Um, with Arenas and Jefferson, and Jason Gardner, and Michael Wright, and Lauren Woods, and Six Luke, pros. Luke, Wal Luke Walton's coming off the bench, and you know it's like he's hardly on the scouting report, and he's got four NBA championships since then. So um, that was my first year here, and I probably was a little spoiled thinking that that could happen every year, and and it is so hard to do. It is so hard to get to the NCAA tournament. So the one moment of the year that I take a chance to step back and and really say, wow, is. Uh, is if we can win that conference tournament because you got a couple days to say, you know, what's going on is pretty special now. Let's see if we can ride this wave and continue it. You grew up in Zionsville, Indiana. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in the suburb of Indianapolis? It was awesome. Um, I was really blessed. I had two great parents, uh, wonderful friends. We had a lot of people that we all lived in one neighborhood. I was an only child, but kids would come over to my house. They were, we were always over at my house. and. Um, there was hardly ever a meal where there wasn't a friend sitting at the table with us. And, and uh, it was just a really, really great place to be. Great support network, um, great people, a lot of my best friends still from there. And, and then you grow up in a suburb of Indy and, and being in Indiana, um, and you're a hoops junkie by nature, uh, it, it, there's no better place. And uh, you know, you're growing up in an era where um, Indiana is, is absolutely rolling. Purdue is absolutely rolling. Um, the Pacers draft Reggie Miller, um, much to the chagrin of all the Steve Alford fans here in Indiana. <laughs> and turns out that everybody in the world wants to wear 31 the rest of their high school and college careers because Reggie Miller's the, you know, arguably one of, if not the best Pacer ever to play. And um, you know, I was one of those kids that wore 31 because he was my idol growing up. And so you got. You got all those things that factor in. It's just a perfect place to be. I know you're a pretty humble guy, so I'll have to brag a little bit about you. But uh, Coach holds the all-time leading scores, assists, and steals at his high school. Looks like the hard work in the gym paid off. Well, it was. It was. We had a lot of. We had a lot of fun working at the game. You know, I, I hope that kids these days enjoy the the work. Um, we talk about it all the time with all the summer teams and with all the things that people can do now. You're always playing in a structured environment. You always have officials. You always have teams. You always have benches. You always have the water coolers out. You know, when we were growing up, it was find a three-on-three -three game and play it outside. And and uh, it wasn't that long ago, um, but it's a it was a lot of fun. And and I had great guys that we worked with. I had great teams that we played on. Um, you know, I had teammates that went on to play in college and and and, and have successful careers. Again, some of my best friends and. And again, was inspired by the college and pro scene um, greatly in the state of Indiana. You attended DePaul University in Greencastle, Indiana. Do a lot of people assume that's the DePaul in the Big East? I get asked a lot, um, is it DePaul? And in fact, when I see somebody outside of Indiana, I say DePaul with a W, um, just, to, just to clarify it. Uh, great situation was... was um, Again, really blessed to go to school there. Uh, felt like I got a wonderful education, very personalized education, which I think you can get here. Small student to faculty ratio, a lot of personal attention, um, and a wonderful uh, experience on the basketball court. We didn't win 
um, near as many games as we've won here. Um, but from a coaching standpoint, Coach Finland and I remain very close. And, and what I learned in those four years is certainly uh, invaluable. You were a three-time academic All-American nominee and an all-conference player. What was it like to play college basketball in Division Three? Well, I wasn't. An, I was probably uh, one of the 50 people that gets votes as honorable mention All-Conference. So that might be a little bit of a stretch, <laughs> but um, but you know, I, I think that I took the school part very seriously. Um, took the basketball part seriously. You know, I'd like to. One of the things you learn when you when you get out of college, and one of the things I try to impart to our guys is you'd like to have some mulligans with your career. You'd like to have some games back. You'd like to have some moments back. And boy, the 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 fewer of those that you ha that you want to have, the better your career was. And so we always talk about the pain of discipline versus the pain of regret, and really maximizing those four years. And I think I learned a lot more from our uh, lack of success at the Paw. Uh, on the court and have hopefully been able to apply that here um, than some people that you know won and won and won and won and went to NCAA tournaments and everything else and, and uh, you know had a had a flawless experience I think we were we were very flawed in a lot of ways and and, and I was a very flawed player um, but it's helped me since and I, I'm appreciative for that did you ever think about walking on at a school like Butler or Indiana? I thought about walking on, um, and I don't know if it would have been an opportunity at any of those places. I did have some opportunities out east. I looked at, I considered some of the Ivies, those type of things. I had a one Division One scholarship um, at Mercer in Georgia, which I, which I visited, and, and to be honest, I was a, um, a guy that said uh, I wanted to play closer to home, and um, and still get a great education. Both schools were great. Um, but the, the, one of the things that I thought about DePaul is, and, and sometimes I think kids, when they're looking at schools and looking at choosing schools, I don't think you can put a, you know, being competitive and competing for championships um, at your level is a really special thing. And, you know, I've, I've talked to family members who have looked at going to this school or this school, and you can go play at a major division one or, or, a, or a low that really doesn't have a chance to win the national championship or advance in the tournament or whatever the case may be or you can go to division three and get a chance to do all those things and when I, I and my point has always been when you compete for championships you compete for championships and those experiences are special and um, so that had a big that had a big influence on my decision as well your first job out of college was with pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly how close were you to becoming a corporate guy your whole life instead of a Division One basketball coach? You know, I think if I was if I was at Lilly and I was 30 years old, I think I would have had a hard time leaving Lilly. I was at Lilly and I was 23. Um, I didn't have a family that I was responsible for uh, as far as I was not married yet, no kids. Um, my wife was working here in Indianapolis, but she was also working at a job that she thought she eventually wanted to go to law school, so she knew it wasn't going to be a long-term thing. Um, and when she decided, when I decided to go into coaching, she decided to go into law school. It was wonderful for us. Um, it was before we were engaged. We both went our own way, and and uh, really, um, we didn't live in the same city, but we did the long-distance thing, and and um, you know, just just really lucky to be able to have that opportunity. I do think this. I think the the corporate experience at Lilly. And having to having to um, be a be a professional in that environment every day was a really important thing for me. So it was a little scary to quit your high paying job to take a volunteer position at, on Coach Mata's you know, staff. You know what? High paying. Um, you know, it was a lot more high paying than the than the volunteer spot I was about ready to go take. But um, you know, at that point, I had saved up some money. Um, I was going to work camps that summer. You know, I was gonna, I was ready to work at Applebee's as a waiter if I needed to. I, I didn't really care about the money. I just wanted to see if I could do this. And the thing that appealed to me about Butler was you could do, you could balance high academics with with a great, you know, athletic reputation. So, what was your first official title, and what was your job responsibilities at Butler? Well, right when I got here, I was I was just volunteering, and so I was basically. Going to be a graduate manager. I was going to go. I, I started some graduate school work, um, and uh, was going to be, you know, it was just a, basically a manager. And um, about four months into that time, I, I there was a job opening on staff, and I was fortunate enough that Thad hired me for that spot. And 
um, you know, the rest is history, I guess. How did working under Coach Nada and Coach Licklider influence your coaching style? Greatly. Um, one of the best pieces of advice, though, once I got the head coaching job was from Sean Miller, who's now at Arizona, who's also worked for Thad and, and we've become good friends, was he said, be yourself. And I thought that that was incredible advice because you do get yourself thinking, well, this was really good when Thad did that, or this was really good when Todd did that. And you have to take the best drills, the best uh, thoughts, you know, some of the best things that you've learned from them and apply those things, but you have to do it within the context of who you are. And that's something that I, that I learned early on that I think has been very important. Um, I can't be uh, more indebted to any people than to Thad and Todd. I mean, Thad gave me my first opportunity. I was adobo with him for one year, director of basketball operations with him for one year. You know, I didn't know what was going on. I was just taking notes in the stands every day. I couldn't coach, I couldn't recruit. But what I, what, what I could do was watch those guys work. And I watched them work, and I watched them work, and I watched them work, and I learned an absolute ton. Probably the most fun I've ever had in coaching. Um, because I didn't have any responsibility other than get make sure the team got there on time, their meals were on time, and that we were, um, you know, I did some of the fundraising work. But other than that, I, I wasn't really coaching. I was learning about coaching and learning about coaching here at Butler. And then with Todd, you know, Todd took a chance in, in bumping me up you know, eight months after I was hired on the Thad staff into a full-time assistance role, and he didn't have to do that. He had every reason not to do that, but um, he let me learn by fire, in my opinion. And uh, and some and I've apologized to him many times since I've become the head coach because, you know, until you're sitting in this chair, you don't understand all the amount of time you have to think about speaking to your team, about planning practice, about planning your next day, about organizing your next day, about managing all of that time. And, and um, you know, to, to have a 23-year-old on staff at that time who was pretty green in me, I, I'm really uh, thankful that he did that. And, and uh, they remain good friends now to this day. So when Coach Licklider got that job at Iowa, what was going through your head? Really hard um, because Coach Licklider, you know, he's leaving. And this is going to be a short turnaround. So, literally, I had suitcases in my car for two days because right when I was told, if I was going to be told that I wasn't a candidate at Butler, I was going to be moving to Iowa City. And that's just the way this business works. And it's a, uh, it's a, it's, it's a really interesting thing and fun thing for everybody else to talk about. The coaching <laughs> carousel, they've got this catchy name and everything else. Not but so much fun to live. When your family and you are on the brink of moving and you haven't thought about putting your house up for sale and you haven't thought about where your kids are going to go to school or any of that stuff and bang it happens it, it's it can be there can be some stress involved with that as well and so I think that that's something that um, that was the hard part about it uh, we had a great staff we had a great staff that that year it had a bunch of fun together and you knew that that was probably going to break up regardless of if Todd went to Iowa, or regardless of if I was hired here or if I went to Iowa. And so um, we were really fortunate that it worked out the way it did. I've got an unbelievable boss in Barry Collier, and you know, I've said this many times, I can't imagine working for a better guy. And because uh, he knows the ups and downs. He, he, he doesn't, he, um, he doesn't uh, react to one day like most people would react to one day. He doesn't react to only wins and losses like most people react to wins and losses. He, he has a great idea about the big picture. And he also understands that, you know what, we've got to do the right things on and off the court. That's, for, that's foremost in our minds. And then, um, you know, hopefully winning will be a byproduct of that.